Hello and welcome to Straight Dude Date Night, a show where two straight dudes go on a date and they review it. My name is David Stallings and I am one of the straight dudes. And I am Ricky Rivera, the other straight dude. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I feel like we've done something like proxy to this before, but we're giving it an official title. And what is the title, Ricky? It's called Certified Banana. Certified Banana. This is an episode of our show where it's, yes, the movie's been out a long time, but it's a banger. It's a certified banana, and we're reviewing it today. We're essentially diving into uh, movies that we really love, Mm -hmm. and uh, usually it ends up being that one of us hasn't seen it, which is kind of perfect, because then we can make that into an episode. Yes. And all the movies out right now kind of suck. Don't want to see any of the movies right now. Also works, because my uh, my schedule has been wild, so... Yep, all the movies suck. The only good thing that's coming out the rest of the year is going to be the Transformers: Rise of Beasts. That's uh, an insane. Take. Everything else until then. <laughs> that is, is an just insane filler. thing you just said. <laughs> everything else is filler until the next Transformers movie. <laughs> the, the it's, only bro, it's the Transformer thing, Monkey. The only thing coming out for the rest of the year oh. that you think is worth seeing is Transformers. I mean, off the top of the head, yeah. I mean, look. It's a Transformer monkey. <laughs> what can be better than Ape Ape Transformer? Now, here's here's the real question. How much screen time do you think that monkey has in the movie? All I need is a minute. You need a single minute uh, of the monkey. Dude, let me see him transform, and let me see him just throw something at somebody or just, like, obliterate someone, and I'm good. What is is the monkey is the monkey gonna be like a car or something still? Like I don't know. I, I, I don't know much about the Maximals or whatever they're I think it's what they're called, the Maximals. The Maximals? Bro, trust bro. The lore goes deep. Don't No, ups, I don't, don't upset, trust. Don't upset the Transformer heads out there. <laughs> You're gonna you're, you're picking at a really niche market here. Okay, <laughs> the, the Maximals are gonna go ham. I don't remember what they what the uh, what the beast. It's like a beast. I don't know what it does. I yeah, don't but remember. you're the, you're the one saying that the only movie worth seeing for the rest of this year <laughs> is Transformer. Yeah, dude, Monkey Transformer. <laughs> Which every time What's we watch name? that trailer, we have laughed the whole time. Yeah, bro, it, it looks awesome. His name Beast Wars Optimus Minor transforms into a black, red, and gold. Uh, chromed wait, 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 wait. Two mon- Hold on. Did you say someone's name is Optimus Minor? That's his name. That is so dumb. Bro, he's going to be awesome, bro. <laughs> there's Optimus Prime, and then there's Optimus Minor? Yeah, bro, he's a truck. He turns into a freaking monk. Little monkey. Oh, my gosh. Well, we I know we're seeing them, but... That was, oh, um, Optimus Primal is his name. That's actually sick. Okay, Primal. Okay, I, I get that. Oh, bro, I get Optimal that. Primal, that's hype. Okay. All right. I got to get my knowledge ready for that one. Yeah, well, now you've created a huge <laughs> hype around it. Everyone in the nation is now waiting for this movie since you've said it. <laughs> it's going to be great. All you need to know is Michael Bay didn't direct it, and there's no Shia LaBeouf. The movie will be awesome. I... I Already set up to be a banger. I think the only reason to watch the Transformer movies was because of Shia LaBeouf mm. originally. Yeah, I guess so. He was he was great. fine. You know what? Scrap the 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 Shia LaBeouf part. Megan Fox. Whack. No Megan. Fox. No Megan Fox. <laughs> Don't no eat her. Bay. Give me just new Transformers. New Transformers. One's a monkey. That's all. It's all you and need. And a Lincoln there. Park song. Give me a Lincoln Park song that goes ham while the car transforms and Shia LaBeouf walks up to the screen. Looks sick. You know, maybe today's episode is actually just about Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even said what we watched. Yet. Nah, dude. <laughs> Too hyped. Nah, no. This we we this is certified banana. Yeah. So everyone, watch out for Transformers coming up soon. Yeah, we will have an episode about that. In June, I think. June sometime. I don't remember because that's not what I was expecting. I don't like to know the details because I want to be surprised. Of course, of course. Because nothing looks better. But today, we're talking about an extremely relevant movie at right now, at the moment, Inception. <laughs> yeah, baby. I have, I, I believe I have been the one to bring up this movie multiple times throughout our podcast, and it's because it is definitely my favorite movie. Uh, I love this movie so much, even though it's kind of a big mind boggle. Uh, I've watched it dozens of times, and... I watched it again this week, and I cried during it. <laughs> There's a lot of layers to this movie. <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> uh, I've seen this movie a few times. 
I, I'm going to be honest, before this week, I could not have told you a single plot point. I, mm-hmm. Besides the fact that they go into dreams, and then they go a dream within a dream within a dream. Yeah. And then there's the abyss of the dreams. That's all I remembered from the movie. But, like, names, which is so crazy to me because it's such a great movie. Yeah. Like, as I was rewatching it, I started remembering everything. And I was like, oh, my God, this movie's awesome. Yeah. But why did I not remember it? I don't... I mean, you maybe you dreamed the whole thing. Maybe it you was know? just so complex when I watched it that I was just like... I don't know what I just watched. Yeah, I do feel like that's that's one thing that probably stuck or like is the hindrance for people is like it is such it, it feels like a fever dream. Yeah. When you're watching it that it either sticks with you or it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you either get it or you don't. You yeah. really got to pay attention and it's one of those movies if you're not paying attention, it's, it's over. you're going to lose it. It's, yeah. it's not it's, it just will not be the same. Especially with how fast this movie goes through. I I when I rewatched it this week, I kind of forgot how the that the pacing of the film is is so extremely fast the yeah. whole time. I watched it in three parts because okay. I didn't have two and a half hours to sit down and watch it okay. with a kid and all. So I watched like a third of the movie and then a third and then I watched a third like right before I came here. What were like the segments of each act that you split it up I, into? I did split it up into points where it wasn't too crazy. So like the first part was before they went into, um, oh gosh, I remember Cillian Murphy's dreams. I watched, oh wow. Okay. I went up until there. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, sorry. I actually, I watched up until we, we meet, um, the architect and then I went from there until we're into his dream. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it? And then the rest of it. Okay. Yeah. So it was like a little okay. bit split up. I All was right. splitting it up before major things were about to happen. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was just like just splitting it up throughout the week. Because also, that's a, that's a lot to like digest. I had to like sit down and I was re-watching scenes because it was just so cool. Yeah. So I, I kept like rewinding and I was like, bro, I'm going to never finish this movie. Cause <laughs> I keep re-watching scenes because it's so cool looking. It's, and I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. Oh man, I should go into I, this movie's been out for over a decade, but I should go into a synopsis. I'm realizing, uh, real quick, if I can explain it. That if quick. you haven't seen it, dream within a dream within a dream. Oh, potentially, potentially? Question mark. Also, if you haven't seen it, uh, I did see when I finished it on on Netflix. It said leaving Netflix May thirty first. So yep. Uh, actually, the movie's leaving. If you haven't seen it, go see it on Netflix. Yeah, by the time it's, this podcast comes out, you have like a week, yeah. week or two. It's incredible. It's perfect. Uh, all right, I'll go into a quick synopsis. Yes, yeah, so the main subject of it is the idea of Inception is dream within a dream within a dream. Uh, but basically, uh, <laughs> in our world, there's this idea that there are people out there called or that have the ability to, or the technology, I should say, to go into people's dreams and they can warp reality around them and they can manipulate the dream and create a specific uh, world to play around in. And with that, there are people who use this technology called, and they are called extractors, where they actually try to steal things from people within the dream. So people's like secrets uh, are hidden away in the dreams naturally. All that good stuff. Leonardo DiCaprio and Joseph Gordon-Levitt are two of these extractors. They are trying... The beginning of the movie is them uh, actively trying to steal uh, an idea from a very wealthy man. And things go poorly. And they get kicked out and are not able to get... They are unable to succeed and are now going to run away uh, from the company that's going to kill them, probably. Maybe. In the process of them leaving, that same rich man that they just attempted to steal from is like, hey, I have an offer you can't refuse. I'll help you. I'll give you money and I'll get rid of all your crimes, Leonardo DiCaprio, so you can go back to America to see your kids. And Leo goes, cool. All right. And then the thing that the rich man wants him to do is not to steal uh, an idea from a person, but to plant one, and that's called inception. Mm-hmm. Make uh, them think they had the idea. That's right. And so the rest of the movie is basically a heist to create three layers of dreams uh, f- inside of Cillian Murphy's head, and go deep within and plant the 
most uh, basic form of the idea inside of Cillian Murphy's head. I'm not going to go into what all of these dreams are comprised of and everything and all the rules. You've probably seen it. You've probably seen it. Uh, There's a whole storyline of Leonardo DiCaprio struggling with his own subconscious of his wife killing herself uh, to that that impacts all the dreams. And so he's constantly being attacked by that. And but yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's it. It was 13 years old. If you haven't seen it, if you have rewatch it. Yeah, it's again another sci fi movie. So always good. Just a staple. Any sci-fi movie, the synopsis always gonna be bad. <laughs> yeah, and but should see this one. That's a wild, wild movie. I, I, it's so much. <laughs> Christopher Nolan is just—he's he, so good at what he does. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes there, are, you know, the, I I do agree with people. Sometimes he does things that like can come off really pretentious. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is one of those movies that I think really is not meant like, it's just very classy looking, but it's not, I, I don't, I didn't get the vibe that he was trying to be smarter than us in any way. I don't think so. Like it was a very complex idea, mm-hmm. but like, honestly, if you just watch, it's really not like that. It's not that deep. It's pretty, as long as you're paying attention and actually watching the movie it's i don't think it's hard to follow at all yeah like i love christopher nolan but like I, when i say like pretentious i mean like tenet tenet was a movie that mm-hmm. like people are like oh you didn't get it like you're dumb and it's like bro <laughs> i don't think anybody got it right D- does anybody get tenet like i've seen it multiple times and i've looked up stuff about it and i still don't think it makes sense like, yeah there are movies like that, or even Dunkirk was another one that, like, was that? That's the one right where it had like no storyline technically. There was, I'm, or there was no main character. I there was no main character. Yes. So he's always on that borderline where people really love him, or they think he's a, a jerk. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I love him. I think the stuff he does is visionary work. You know. Well, I think it's cool to have someone who is actively trying to create original ideas all the yes. time. And every time trying to also push his own boundaries Dude, on he, how to do it. Like he's trying to like you sent me the video of how the effects were done. Oh my god. It's gosh. crazy to me that like after rewatching that movie, that scene is not that long. No. I mean it, it is a pretty big point in the movie, but like the scene that took months, like half a year to film, is only like a minute and a half, two minutes long. So to to clarify for the for our audience there is one scene in particular that in inside of one of the dreams, they're in a hotel and it's, that is a layer that is a dream within one of the dreams right now in the top layer dream. They're in a car that is actively rolling over, which impacts this hotel dream. The second and so dream. the entire hotel is now spinning. And meanwhile, in the hotel, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is having a fight with a projection, a subconscious projection trying to kill him. Uh, and the walls are actively rotating the entire time. I've seen this movie dozens of times. But it was only this time that I was I realized this is one take, this scene. Oh, yeah. It was one take, and they're showing them tossing each other from one wall to another, suddenly to the ceiling and back and forth the whole time. And it using the gravity against each other. It's a wild scene. And that's when I was like, I need to go look up how this scene was made. And that's the video I sent you. They built an entire like centrifuge system. They built this entire hotel set yeah. inside of a big cylinder oh, so yeah. that they could just start rotating it and have the camera pointed upward at them. And then also had Joseph Gordon-Levitt and the, everyone else who needed to do zero gravity stuff taught all of them for over a month Hey, this is how you do. This is how you move with all the cables attached yep. to you. And here's how you do wire combat and everything. They had to like. They had to prep for this. Like not only even practicing that, they had to get into shape in certain like. They do certain workouts just to, yep. you know, make sure that their core can handle. 
Yeah. The cables are pulling at you at like your, you know, your waist, right? Like mm-hmm. your waist, your torso area. Yeah. So like, that's a lot of, that's a lot going into that. And then to add on, I don't know if you heard this in the video I sent you. Joseph Gordon-Levitt did all of his own stunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the movie. So he did, he not only acted throughout the whole thing, but also went through all the training for that scene as well. Yeah, they were saying the only CGI in those scenes is removing the cables that are holding them Mm -hmm. and just some like minor details in the back, like putting a bathroom in the room. Yeah. Like simple things. And then they even like did the, the, the costumes to make it seem like the clothes aren't falling down or anything like Mm -hmm. that, which is crazy to me, which is such attention to detail. But that's what I mean when I say like Christopher Nolan, like they could have done this scene in an easier fashion, perhaps like, like, we do a few takes here uh, where they're dealing with two walls. Now we show that they're falling to the other one. We could have done that. But that's not nearly as cool as actually making the whole thing possible in one take. Yeah. Because it's... That scene is so... it. I mean, again, I've seen this movie over and over. It blew my mind this time watching that. Of just, I can't believe they were able to make this. Well, and the things that you got to appreciate from a guy like that, like I feel like he'd be so fun to work with because he's, there is no second unit filming. He mm-hmm. is, him and his cinematographer are doing every scene. Yeah. No matter what. They did the same thing in Batman. Mm-hmm. Like in The Dark Knight, they did the same, like all his movies, he just, he makes sure I am here for every single scene. That means even a scene where it's just, oh, there's my kids. Yep. Some scene anybody could feel. You know what I mean? Like yep. he's like, no, I'm gonna be here for every single shot of this movie. I, I'm not gonna miss a moment. Yeah. Like that is such commitment to your work. It's such passion. Yeah. Too. And, and sh- I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that do it, but like, for such big, like anybody that does that, I respect you so much. Yeah. For doing that, it's just so cool. Well, even with just what you just said of like just one scene of we show the kids like and they're turning they turn their face to the camera finally right yeah and it's such a small scene and it may take if like to get everything set up it may take a few hours and then it's literally one shot and we're done but it's the idea that if he was there on set every single time it's this idea that there is not a single point in the movie that matters less than others yeah and so i should be there to, this is my creation. I want this to be perfect. I should be there for it because I care about every single second of this. Yeah. Yeah. The, and like even the actors being so like that, that's how you get your actors to buy in too. For having like Joseph Gordon Levitt, just like, I'm going to do every scene. <laughs> like, I want, like, that's so cool. And the passion he has for it too. Like, I was reading that um, the role of Cobb. He, the only person he had in mind was Leo. And if Leo didn't want to do it, he wasn't going to do it. That's insane. Dude. Like he was just like, this is your role. And if you're not going to do it, I'm not making this. Then movie. the movie doesn't exist. The movie doesn't exist. If you're not in it. Like, like I, that, I wrote this for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well they wrote the script together. I read that too. That, that Leo, he Leo was, like, was involved in writing this. Yeah. He was like, I have this idea and you're going to come help me write it. That's so, oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if he's even listed, like, credit, but, like, I was reading on there that it was saying that, like, he would literally work with Leo on the script to make sure that Leo knew what was happening throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Leo would be, like, one of the only people on set to know what the full story was because he didn't tell people the entire storyline of the movie as they were going. Man, that is, that is so cool. I mean, because here's the thing I was thinking about watching it is that the concept itself is actually really fascinating on its own. But the way they expanded on it, like this whole thing could have just been its own heist movie, right? Yeah. The whole point of it is we're trying to steal from steal an idea from a person or plant an idea in and that's it. But I was really shocked watching it again. One of the things I love about it is not the idea, it's the the very emotional issues that they bring up with it. Of Leo being a grieving husband, now just trying to get back to his kids. Like, this whole arc that, honestly, I, I don't... It's not that it's not needed, but the movie wouldn't wouldn't be the same without it. it yeah, it, I see what you're saying. Like, it definitely did not need an emotional attachment arc like that. Like, yeah. it could have been totally fine without Maul invading the dreams at any point. Mm-hmm. It just added another layer of depth and 
makes you care a little bit about what's, you know, these people outside of these dreams. Yeah. Because Leo technically, I mean, he's kind of a bad guy. If you really look at it, like he's, yes. he's a thief. Mm-hmm. And he explains that too early on in the movie when he's talking to his, his uh, father-in-law. He's like, like his father-in-law is like, I taught you all these things and you use it to thief. And he's like, well, I mean, there's really no other way to use it. So yeah, like, I kind of have to. Yeah, like to I, I'm exiled, <laughs> and so like people think I killed my wife. Yeah, I can't really use it for anything else. So mm-hmm. you know, um, but like I mean, I still think like he's he's still technically a thief. Yeah, he's not he's not the best person. I mean, you empathize with him mainly over the kids situation, exactly, right? And you feel bad about what's happening because he went too deep in researching and yeah, went way too deep before. Yeah. Um, so it's just a good way to kind of bring you back into humanizing him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely was a great story arc. And bro, it I wasn't even needed, but it was great. It's really not like the whole thing could just be in, like an action heist. I realized, but the, the scenes that always hit me the most from this movie are the flashbacks to Lee, to, to Dom and Maul, like trying to, Cobb trying to convince her no this this world is real because it's like you can have just we could have just had the idea of hey the whole thing is a heist and we're just going to try and try and plant this idea in someone's mind and it's nearly impossible and we've never done it before yeah which they go through that process but on top of that we elaborate and say also here's what Here's the power of Inception because this guy did it to his wife and she killed herself because of it. Well, it kind of helps fix its own plot holes in a sense where it's like, okay, so if I can go into a dream and control the dream, what if I went into another dream and Mm -hmm. it just acknowledges it? It's like, yeah, yeah, here's what happens. Yeah. You get too deep. You can go deeper, Mm -hmm. but your time is going to be even longer in each dream, which is wild. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the other thing. Okay, I wanted to. I feel like I've 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 talked about this multiple times. Okay, I've mentioned the rules with movies, right? With or with sci-fi movies in particular. If you're gonna have a wild concept, we have to, and you want the audience to buy into it. We we need some rules of it, right? And we can kind of break them and be like, is that possible? No, we're going to push the boundary, whatever. You need the base rules of it. Yeah, when a movie is set on a very unique idea or you're building a universe, yeah. you need rules. And I'm going to use this reference again. We've used it before, but Endgame is the biggest culprit of this, right? They introduce time travel into it. They try to set up rules, and then they proceed to not, uh, not keep any of the rules in mind afterwards yeah. right all it's not that they're breaking them they're completely throwing out the rules yeah what i loved as i watched this movie was realizing very early on they set up all of the rules for you right away the first the first 20 minutes is us already seeing a dream within a dream within a dream like we're already seeing that from the beginning we yeah. already establish what does what happens if you go even further? Well, we go to limbo. We already established the inception thing is possible. We're, we have to push boundaries in order to do it, but we have to, but it can be done. I love they, they don't shy away from the questions that the audience is going to ask. They address them and then always stick to them. Yeah. The rules are set out plain, plain in stone. And they're like, that's it done. Yep. This is the rules. I don't understand why other sci-fi movies struggle with this idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they pretty much lay it all out and they give you reasonings behind it. Um, and it's cool to see that they have backups to their own stuff too. Mm-hmm. Like it was just like, like there's moments where like the kicks were missed, but they were like, no, it's okay. We got a backup kick. Yeah. Thought about that. Thought about every fail safe. Well, it shows <laughs> the, for somebody dying, the attention to detail of, uh, not just like, the writers, but also of the characters, right? Yeah. Because the timeline of them, like, perceiving as they're planning the main Inception heist, is that's like months of them planning this out, of them architecting these dreams and coming together and trying to formulate what is the actual plan to to do this. Yeah. Like, so them coming up with all of, okay, well, we have a backup kick to, to wake us up. We have this, we have this, we have this. 
we have so much lined up. We can't fail. And then what happens as soon as we start, everything goes south. Now we improvise. I love it. <laughs> so there is there is one rule that they set up that I, I'm still confused on and I'm still trying to realize. And I think that this is this kind of leads into the next topic of like what everybody's big thing is with this movie. Mm-hmm. And that's, is he still dreaming by the end of it? Okay. Now, we'll get into that. But yeah, my, yeah, my we'll question about it. the rule that relates to this is his his totem. Yeah. It's the little um, spinny thingy, you know? The top. The top. That was his wife's totem. Mm-hmm. But they say early on that you can't ever let anybody else touch your totem. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it throws off the dream, and you'll never know what's reality again. Yeah. But he takes his wife's totem, and now he uses that to determine reality. So I think that is also a reason that Maul has such a powerful presence in every dream that he's in. Mm. Because I thought about this, even if we looked at one of the side characters or the supporting characters, and we look at Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Arthur. Weird names. Arthur. Yeah, Arthur. Strange names. Very strange. I'll get into the names later. But, (laughs) But Arthur... He's he's a human being who probably has his own sense of guilt, regret, and shame in some way. He, but he doesn't have any issues that affects the dreams. Every person we put into each dream has all of these issues. If they're an adult, they have regret, guilt, and shame from something, right? Yeah. Only Cobb has this issue where someone is someone in his subconscious is actively attacking the whole time. I think it's because he's using her top Mm. because she is the only other person in and the only other person in his subconscious that knows that item, which makes sense because because he he, that's what she says. He he implants the idea that mm -hmm. that this is the real world. So she puts her top away because she doesn't need it anymore because she knows she's in the real world and then he steals it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's why. Cause, and they establish it, too, with him that he is the main culprit to break his own rules constantly. He teaches yeah. everyone else, hey, this is what you do. But me, I'm already messed up, and I'm just going to keep going down this rabbit hole, and it, I, I guess I'll live with it. I'm That is my theory about the top, because I, I, I did think that's odd as well. Yeah, that would make sense, um, which kind of leads into the next thing is that the movie ends with him spinning the top and we don't ever see it stop. We see it slow, mm-hmm. but obviously that was an open ended type of ending, which I think is why this movie is so controversial for some people where they yeah. don't like it is because people don't like open ended endings, mm-hmm. which I get that mm-hmm. totally get it. Um, I personally, I enjoy it and I have my own thoughts on it, but I want to know what you think. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I remember reading a, a while back about why they left it open-ended and Christopher Nolan had said something along the line. I don't know it verbatim, but he said something along the lines of like, yeah, well, you remember it. You remember that it's open-ended and that it's something for you to think about and take into the world following this. Like, were they dreaming? Were they not? Now that's up to you to figure out and honestly, let it be up to you to figure that out and mm. let that help help your story in some way uh which i think i i think that's awesome to have stories that do that do stuff like that that really make you think personally especially after this second or this this uh rewatch of it i am fairly convinced it was not a dream i'm fairly convinced it was not a dream because at the very end oh my gosh and i cried watching it (laughs) at the very end when uh, Leo, I feel weird calling him just Leo, but it's so much easier. Nah, we're cool with him, Leo. We yeah, we're cool with him. I have his number, sure. Uh, when Leo comes back home finally, and his kids are outside, uh, we actually see them for the first time. Actually, turn. We actually see their faces for the first time. Yeah, and so he's he has talked about that he has his biggest regret is in that moment where he had to leave, he was not able to uh, yell out to them to see them one more time, right? Yep. So <clears throat> yeah, I think that them being able to turn and show their face to Leo, to the camera, to their dad, is an indication that we are moving forward. This is not a dream. This is reality again. 
because mm. that specific memory doesn't exist anywhere. That's doesn't my seem t- like they age though. Well, that's a question of how long ago did this happen? It's a great question. Right. It's been, it's been a while. Well, has it? Maybe like a year. What if it's just been a year? It's been enough time for them to do a couple of jobs for Mal to affect it. But that being said, the couple of jobs only take like, they take like a second in the real world and they could take yeah. hours in hours or days in that, the dreams. That's just where I think it's crazy because they don't age. Mm-hmm. It's the same moment. As mm-hmm. when he left, right? Yeah. So that that right there is just, I think, another thing that he threw in there to keep it open ended. Mm-hmm. I I I just find it hard to believe that through it that it was all a dream, because then why didn't? Uh, I guess like does Leo know he's dreaming, so he couldn't affect it po- possibly? But I feel like in a dream, do you have? It's it's hard for me to think that all of this was was a dream because it's very it's a very brutal dream if it is. So I don't think necessarily if that theory is right of uh, he's still in a dream. I don't think the whole movie was in his dream though. I think if that is the case, he's still in the abyss at the end of the movie when he goes into it. Mm-hmm. And this is just when he goes and he goes to meet. Um, oh gosh, Sido. What is it? Saito, Saito? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Saito. And he like tells him, he's like, we can have our arrangement back. That could be potentially him just coming back too. Mm. And like, we're in a new scenario because, um, Mr. Saito remembers in the early in the movie, we, we were in Mr. Saito's dream. And then he comes back and he's like, yo, you were in my dream. What the heck? Mm. But when we go back to the plane, how come, uh, what's his name? Doesn't, I'm, I'm so bad at this. I'm just forgetting everybody's <laughs> names. Their names are so weird. I, I hate their names. The names. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Fisher doesn't acknowledge that any of them are around them and that they were just in his dreams. Mm-hmm. Right. But Mr. Saito did in the beginning of the movie mm-hmm. did acknowledge that he knew that they were in his dreams, mm-hmm. but Fisher does not. Which. So if that theory is correct, that he is still dreaming, I think that from when he goes into the abyss to find Mr. Saito, that's just a world that they've created for themselves of like, here's your arrangement. Here's my arrangement for you is that we're, I've created the world Mm -hmm. and whether you want to believe it or not is up to you. Personally, what I think the ending is, is I think he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. I don't think he cares if he's dreaming or not. Yeah. Because what's happening when he gets his kids, that's the only thing he's ever wanted was Mm -hmm. his kids back. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's dreaming either. I agree with you. I just think the 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 thing still spinning and he walks away is him just letting go of all of that. Yeah. Letting go of his wife, letting go of questioning reality. Especially if we follow the idea that he is keeping a dangerous totem with him. Yes. Because it's the only thing he truly has left of his wife. Yep. That moment at the very end is more of a signif- uh, more of a signifier of letting go of that Yes. Regret and guilt and just, and moving on. Yeah. So I think whether he's in a dream or not, I don't think it really matters to him. Essentially. I think he just is like, I've let go. Yeah. If this is a dream, then I'm perfectly content and happy. And if this is not a dream, I'm perfectly content and happy. Yeah. And life will go on because if I am truly in the abyss, there will be no issues because I'm creating everything around me the way I want it to be. Yeah. And if this is real life, then this is even better. Yeah. (laughs) So, so one of the things you know that uh in my in my theory I just realized was you said well the kids didn't age well we saw in when Cobb and Maul were in limbo together they actually did age through it so you do still mm. age within the or in that reality of the dream you age yeah still so the kids would it I don't think it necessarily matters if they aged or not during it right yeah Again, I don't think the whole movie is in a like I I don't think he's in a dream the whole movie. But if he was in a dream, doesn't necessarily matter because he can go on. Yeah, I think the dream. Well, I think are we still dreaming starts when he is wakes up on the plane. Mm. Like I think that point on is where I'm like, ooh, is he still dreaming or is he not still dreaming? Yeah, 
because they they said that in the abyss, or is that what they call it, the abyss, right? Limbo. Limbo. Mm-hmm. Ah, limbo. The limbo, abyss. The but abyss. It, in limbo, you kind of just create your own world the way you want it to be. Because yeah. we saw Saito did that. He created his old palace again, and he's head boss mm-hmm. of his own empire. Yeah. You know, and we we've seen that they can just create their own life in there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I do agree that at the the. If there is a question on where, like, where is it still a dream? It would be that moment, mainly because yeah, the beginning of the movie is not a dream. I don't, I don't think. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, obviously they're in a dream, a dream at the beginning. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. it's a dream, but, but like, it's not within story, like an yeah. overarching dream. Yeah. That storyline up until we get on the plane and then we enter Fisher's dream mm-hmm. is all real, and then once we're in Fisher's dream, from then on, it could all be dream. Yeah. So with because. To the transition from that final time in limbo to uh, back to the plane, we don't see the kick or anything. Nope. They have a gun. It's implied if it if they did wake up uh, from that dream, it's implied what the kick was, which is that they sh- used the gun <laughs> to shoot each other. Yeah, but but if you're in they limbo, don't show is it. that the way out? Is just shooting yourself? Well, they the it has to be one of the options because. When they originally went, they threw Fisher off of a skyscraper and Ariadne followed. <laughs> and once they fell off the tower, then went back uh, a layer up. Yeah, I always thought that that was um, not necessarily them killing themselves. It was more of the impact. It's like the free falling feeling is what is what kicks them back in. Because they, they go back in before they even hit the ground. That's true. It's, I, it's more so the feeling of falling is what put them back into their original... And back up a level. Yeah. We don't ever see them hit the... Unless he just didn't want them hitting the ground, obviously. I'm pretty sure they just didn't want them to hit the ground. Like, you'll notice there's no gore in this movie at all. Other than, like, a little bit of blood shows up on Saito when he gets shot. But, like, every time they shoot someone, they just collapse and there's no blood. There's nothing. (laughs) Yeah, no effects. Don't need it. They very clearly did not want that. I'm I'm pretty sure that them waking up is the indication they've hit the ground. Yeah, because we do have a scene when Ariadne is falling off the tower in Limbo. We see her awake as she's falling, and then as she gets to the ground, she then comes back. If it were that the s- sensation of falling did it, she would immediately wake. You know what I mean? So, if but if if you could just kill yourself in Limbo with a gun, then how come she didn't just shoot herself rather than jump off? Uh, she had a gun. I, I she don't shoots know. Maul. That's what. I, see yeah, what she saying? shot Maul. Yeah. So like they imply that the the shooting happens, but then how come she didn't just shoot? can't waste the ammo? Can't waste the We're ammo. We're in a dream. It, we can't. About, we have unlimited no, ammo. No, if you don't understand, Ricky, in saying? limbo, just, look, in limbo, I, the, the 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 ammo is still I'm valuable. Not saying that this is what's going on. I think that's just what makes it so fun is that yeah. we can have open ended discussions. Oh, yeah. about how this ended because. Because if that's the case that, you know, Saito, they shoot each other, mm-hmm. then how come the other one didn't shoot? Or how come nobody, we just never shot ourselves before? If we knew we yeah. were in limbo, because Leo very clearly knows he's in limbo. I know he's trying to go find Mr. Saito, and mm-hmm. I know that he may not know that he's in limbo. But you know, like, I just, it's interesting. Yeah. It's a very interesting concept. Yeah, I can see, I can see the, the dilemma there as, as you think more and more about it. But it's just, it's one of those things of like, we'll never know the answer on some of these questions. And I love that, man. The real question is, is uh, when they wake up on the plane, they're like, oh, hey, by the way, we're going to land in LA in 20 minutes. And Saito in 20 minutes somehow <laughs> clears Leo's whole record. I in- don't know how you do that. <laughs> you do that when you're in a dream. <laughs> True, true. You see what I'm saying? The like, speed is very <laughs> fast. Yes, I don't understand that. I, at that part, I was like, "Bro, 20 minutes? There's no way he's that powerful." <laughs> that he just cleared their name into what he's is. powerful. He, or I guess, he's, he's rich enough that he bought an entire airline, an he's, airline that's he's so currently rich and active. Powerful. But he's also willing to just be like, "Nah, that's cool. I can live in limbo. I'll do it. It's fine." <laughs> like he was like, when he got shot, he was like, "Nah, it's all good. Mission Done. must go on." It's like, bro, what? He's really doing this for you, dude. All of this is for you, dude. That's this is not how it works. You have to come out of this. 
it's just a thought. It's just food for thought, David. If 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 they could just shoot, like, because you can't really die in limbo, right? Like, you, otherwise you just keep. I guess you can die in limbo because that's how we see Maul and uh, Leo come out, right? Mm-hmm. They get run over by the train. Yeah, and that's oh, how they come a, too. Such a horrifying scene. It's such a oh. You know what I know this this time, and it's even cooler to think about if if what you said earlier is true that only Leo of the actors, Leo is the only one who actually knew all the details of the script or like what's actually going on. There's a line very early on that I don't think I've ever caught before. That's a foreshadow. And it's once they get out of Saito's dream at the very beginning of the movie and they're back on the train and they're cleaning everything up and they're like, we all need to split up. Uh, Cobb, Leo's character, very offhandedly, as they're leaving, he's like, or he's like, I'm getting off at Kyoto. And they're and they're like, all we have to do is get to another room. And he's like, I don't like trains. And yeah. then walks out. And I don't think I ever caught the foreshadowing in that because yeah. the trains are such a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they get hit movie. by a train later on, too. Gets run over, by, gets hit by a train <laughs> in one of the dreams later. And the train is how him and Maul managed to get out of limbo. Yeah. Like. It's pretty wild, man. It, it, there's a lot to this movie, a lot of theories that come out of it, which is really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for an idea like that, where like you create the idea that we could be a hundred layers deep at this point. Yeah. I think it's okay to leave a bunch of theories. It makes it fun to talk about afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you know, it doesn't really, I don't feel like it really leaves like plot holes, so to speak. Right. Like we question why didn't they sh- why didn't they use the gun to kill themselves? Well, they had another option. They jumped off the tower. Does it matter that much? Not really. Neither really breaks anything, right? Because we do know that you, all you have, you just have to kill yourself in order to get out of the dream. Because we they showed that with the train, right? Yeah. So you just have to do something. Which so makes does it, it very scary concept when oh you my gosh. question reality. Oh my gosh, dude. The whole, I mean, the, half this movie is also just a mental health scare. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, just such a horrifying concept of, of it, 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 for those who don't know, Cobb basically, in, in order to convince Maul that they should leave Limbo, he, the idea he gives her is that Reality is not enough, and the only way to go back to true reality is to kill yourself, which helps them to get out of limbo, but then when back in the real world, the idea is still stuck. And she, Yeah, she still doesn't feel like it's reality. Yeah, Maul had to convince, uh, Maul was convinced that she was not in real life and needed to kill herself to go to uh, reality. Yeah, the next Horrifying level. concept. The next level, yeah. Which again, the movie did not... Uh, I mean, for what it is, it's a perfect movie. So it I love that they had all of it. But the movie doesn't need that. That entire arc, I don't feel like. The it Yeah. <laughs> extremely intense. <laughs> yeah, I mean it well it helps feed the idea of how I, I I think the only reason to well one of the big reasons too why that storyline exists is it helps prove why he thinks that they can pull this off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is the inception idea because he's the only one that's done it before. Yeah. Um that is the other scary thing where they say that Cobb is the only one that's been to limbo and back. So he knows how to navigate it, but they all are very scared of limbo and they're like, you don't come back except mm-hmm. for Cobb. He comes back. Yep. Maybe that's just another bit of foreshadow of like, maybe Cobb never left. Oh, <gasps> maybe he's always been in limbo. True. <laughs> I have to say I've forever been in the dream state. I have to say one of the worst parts of this movie though, I, I every time I've watched it, I've thought this, Whoever chose the names of the characters. So dumb. It, all of the names are awful. Bro, can I read you a fact about that? Yes. If you take the first letter of the main character's names, Dom, okay. Robert, uh, em- Emis, Arthur, Maul, Saito, they spell dreams. Dumb. If you add Peter, Ariande, Ariandne, and Yusuf, the whole makes dreams pay, which is what they do for a mind thief. Dumbest Dumb. thing I've Dumb. ever heard. That's, Shut up, Christopher Nolan. This is why people think you're pretentious. <laughs> that's the pretentious part. <laughs> that's the pretentious part coming out of him. Okay. But that, even, so if that, dumb. even if that was the goal, 
Okay, if the goal was we're gonna make all the main characters' names, it's gonna add up to dreams pay. Okay, all right, whatever. Why is the main character's name Dom Cobb? It does. It's a weird name. Yeah, Dom. it's a weird name to put together. Not on their own, but like Dom works. Cobb kind of works. All I can ever think of yeah. is corn. Or uh, the daughter's name Filipina or whatever. Filipina. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like if we needed a D Philippa name, or something. Yeah. yeah, Philippa. If we needed a D name for the main character, why not just do David? And yeah, just, that's, it's that's just a David. solid name. It's a solid name. Yeah. I think it's pretty solid. And or how could we possibly do a ridiculous name like Robert? Why Robert not do Ricky. Ricky? That'd be cool. That would be perfect. That'd be awesome. That'd have been a yeah. way cooler name. Yeah. I, uh, the the names always throw me off. Mainly Dom Cobb. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird... Uh, the names are definitely... It doesn't help when the movie was so complex that the names are also complex because mm -hmm. I like that's part of the reason why I, I don't remember this movie too. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't tell you a single name. Now I remember why. Yeah. I still don't remember the names. At the... The name Ariadne, like I get that she, I think they were in France during that, but she, she's clearly not French in the movie too. It's just an odd name to throw she's in not there. French, like just we needed an A, Ariana, great, done. Like or Elena, done. Like it's super easy. Yeah, I feel like that's that's very nitpicky, but it does <laughs> throw you in a loop when you're watching it. So dumb. That's the that's the dumbest part of this movie. Uh, yeah, the names are pretty dumb. I told you before this movie before we started the podcast that there's one scene in this movie. I need to know. Now, okay, I actually thought of a second scene while I was while we were talking oh, no about way. this. Stuff. But there, but there is one scene in this movie where I verbally laughed because okay. I thought it was so silly. Mm -hmm. It's in, and I'm so sorry. You can edit this out if you want, but there's no other way to describe it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt has to get everybody wrangled, so he makes one big sixty-nine. <laughs> of like six All the characters Wait what And I just oh! I laughed So hard I laughed So hard Because he just Stacks them on each other And then ties them up <laughs> Because they're literally Head to toe They're like He stacks them that way Where like One person is laying one way And then their head The next person Lays the other way And he just Stacks them up And that's all I saw When I I, I had to replay it Like three times To make sure That's what I was looking at I was like This looks so stupid I have never Looked at that scene And thought that before Dude, But It's the only thing Like it just It's all I saw I didn't know how to describe it In any other way Other than just It's just one big 69 It's just They're just all Stacked on top of each other It looks so silly <laughs> Oh my god and, and that's a real thing That they did too like, Yeah they were all building. They legit tied them all together Like that mm -hmm. And just yanked them through the tunnel, the hallway. That's yep. how they really filmed they it. They all had the wires on and everything. And we, <laughs> it looked so dumb. I'm trying to think what would have been. Because he needed. He obviously did that in order to yeah. quickly move them all together. No, right? I, I but know I'm why he to, did it. I'm trying to think of a better way to put them, though. There's not a better way. There's, There's not a better way to do it. It just, like. There are, there's, it's just one of those things where it's like, no, it makes a hundred percent sense. It just what he works did, because the bodies fit together but it looks so well. Like so dumb. I mean, he could have just tied them all together. Yeah, he didn't but, have to stack them so properly like that. He could have just literally like bunched them up and then tied them like a pirate, you know? True. Yeah. And, like, you know, and you see the movies and the pirates, so they tie them all together in a pole. Yeah. Could have done something like that. Yeah. Could have just strung them together and just pulled them through. I feel like the one at a time, like the, the string them would take too long, though. It needed to be Bro, compact. He, he stacked them all together. It was like, you stay here? And no, you don't understand <laughs> the power of stacking. It's too, it's too fast, it was just bro. So, I, I don't know why he did it, too, because when the explosion hits, it helps them all hit at the same time. Because mm -hmm. they all need to drop at the same time, right? Yeah. They all need to, so that makes sense. It just looked so silly. <laughs> when you, like Seeing it, like it had to be one of the funniest scenes to film. Oh yeah Like that had to just be Hilarious On mm -hmm. set Of just like Alright guys Pile on baby Alright everyone the, Eyes closed Don't think about What's going on Just let yourself be do moved Do not open your eyes you don't, don't open You don't want to know Where you are mm -mm. Just you smell that Don't care Don't care <laughs> oh, Cause they're like God. Head to toe Like they're literally Just it's so yep. weird But <laughs> that scene Made me laugh <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> 
was so silly. Uh, that makes me love the movie even more. Though. No, it, it was great. It just it looked so dumb. I was like, bro, come on. Like I know this is what needs to be done, but it looks silly. Yeah. Uh, the only other scene that was also kind of weird was, and it makes more sense now that you mentioned it. But it's where um where they get in the van, and mm-hmm. all of the um people are closing in on them, like his conscious, his subconscious. Uh huh. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt is shooting out of the the hangar. But, like, the way he shoots his gun, it just looks so funny. It, it's really nitpicky. It's not How a, does he shoot the gun? He just kind of just, like, pew, 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 pew. But, like, the gun doesn't shoot because, like, they didn't edit anything. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the gun is just, like, pew, 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 pew. Like, it's shooting, and they make the noise. Uh-huh. But his gun doesn't move like it's shooting. Yeah. He's just holding it out. <laughs> and they're like, bro, we're in a dream. Grenade launcher. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah. Oh, finally, I, somebody gets it. Yeah, Tom Hardy understood. Okay, I was I like, can, bro, why are we sitting here with this little gun that doesn't work when we could just make grenade launchers? Yeah, I. He's the forge. I. I. Oh my gosh, Tom Hardy's character, is, I think, <laughs> is so fun. Of just being, he's able to just transform and do anything he wants in the dreams. Yeah, you're. Yeah, that that moment's great. And <laughs> I just, I was watching him shoot his gun, and I was like. Huh, Christopher Nolan really isn't big on like gunplay, is he? I think that's just the way he he does the movies. Because I've never once thought, uh, like even in like Batman, like I, I can't like they, when they shoot guns in Batman, it's kind of weird too. Really, so, I don't feel like I've noticed this before. Uh, it's, it doesn't do it much. He's not really a big gun guy. I've never really. I mean, Dunkirk. I didn't watch Dunkirk all the way through, so I couldn't tell you if that's how that one went. But. I mean, I watched it. I don't remember it. That that's not a scene I'm not going to knock him for. It just was funny. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a a comedy moment where he's just like shooting this gun and it's not really working. I mean, it's working in the movie, but like watching it, you're like, bro, that's like a whole rifle. Mm. There's no way that he's just like holding it out and it's just like shooting all these people just fine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bro. But we're in a dream. Shooting a matter. gun precisely is way easier than you but think, dude. Shooting a grenade launcher that was awesome. Yeah, that was the best scene. I was like, yes. Thank you. Somebody gets it. What he understands. Just make. I need ammo. Just summon it. It's extremely <laughs> valuable, but just summon the ammo. I need a better gun. Yeah. Just summon it. Give me the new gun because this one sucks. New gun, new ammo. Done. Um, another crazy thing is that this movie didn't win Leo the Oscar. We were talking about that before. Yeah, the we mentioned that beforehand, bro. I can't. I mean, like, I think this movie's dope for, like, every. Th- Everything that they that they put together in this, the the cinematography, the acting that they have, the music, ev- the idea, the storytelling, yeah. it's all so perfect to me. I don't know if like, like I get why you might not win Best Actor because of this movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this movie's more about the the story of it as opposed to like. You watch this for the acting. Leo's acting is on point, though. I mean, the guy's the guy's fantastic. Everything he's in, he's great. Like when he when he fights though, his reality, like when he comes back and he's just so panicked of trying to like, you know, am I in reality or not? Like that, like I was like stressed watching it. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I, I feel it, Leo. Yeah. But Leo is one of the greatest actors of all time, mm-hmm. hands down. He uh, may he um, may be a little weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, cares about the world a lot, which is great. I know he's a big environmentalist, you know? I've also seen the photo of him on his big old yacht yep. <laughs> also proclaiming yep. this. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know Leo's a weird dude, and he has his things, too, with, like, the women he dates and all that. But put all that Bro, aside, you man. You gotta, you gotta have the limit of the date. <laughs> you, yeah, I was, only date up until they're 25, yeah, and then we replace we them repla- to the next yeah. one. Weird but, dude. Very weird dude. I, but his I movies... I think he's sage. I mean. <laughs> his movies? Mwah. <laughs> it's, it, this is great because, uh, yeah, like one of my favorite movies is Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. and Leo also. It seems like we might just be Leo fanboys. You we know? should just change this to just certified Leo. No, nope. Leo banana. <laughs> this this whole segment is, <laughs> is just all right. Here's our next Leo. Di- yeah, you know, it's a DiCaprio movie. We could was- really just go through his whole catalog, and we. I, I would love to do that. I want to go through his catalog and rank it from best to worst. Oh, that could be fun. That could be a fun one because he's got a lot of bangers out there. He's got a lot of bangers. There's a few stinkers, but I would like to find the stinkers. I'd like to find them. Maybe but. Uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, it's kind of midi. It's like all right. Yeah, that's true. That's a that's just kind of like 
It's just a fluffy movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot of like nothing going on. Yeah. Oh man. I'm I'm real I was so happy to watch this movie this week though. I've tried to yeah. look at bad reviews. I'm not gonna lie to you. I can't find one under like six paragraphs. <laughs> the, people funny. on IMDB are very passionate one way or the other. <laughs> they, Every <laughs> review is like seven paragraphs of why this movie is amazing and why this movie sucks. Yeah, well, I only trust the ones that say it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, you know. It's this is what I love about uh, what we do is. It's all opinion based, so it's fun to see other people's opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, they may not be right, obviously, but to us, yeah. But well, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I arguably am, am just right. Oh yeah, no, I've won an Academy Award, so you got to listen to what I say. Of course, yeah. <laughs> of course yes, yes. We in our own we, what the people don't know is we host our own Academy Awards every week. Uh, after we release the episodes and give each other awards during that, like, dude, we're Academy Award winners, you and I, Ricky. <laughs> and the and the fun facts of this movie are just lists on lists on lists of things, bro. It's it's insane. There's a lot, man. Oh man. Well, this was this was a a banger. The certified banana. Do we certified banana? So for for banana meter, well, we should get that in here, shouldn't we? Mm, I don't know if I want to bring him in. You don't know if you want to bring him in. For this? <laughs> I don't think we need him. <laughs> you don't think we need him for this one? Well, I don't know. Do we? I mean, do we bring them? No. Hold, hold on. on. Hold we're on, co- hold we're on. contemplating. No, 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 Stay. No, 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 no. Hold on. Just hold on to it. We'll, we might bring you in. Okay. Good. Yeah. Do we bring it in? For I don't this? know if we do. If it, if the episode is certified banana <laughs> already, do we need? Yeah. It? Like it's already like it's got the medal. It has an episode dedicated to it with. It's rank displayed. You know what I mean? It's, it's on here because it's a favorite. It's already a favorite. Like, I don't know if we... I don't know if we need to rank it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Because the movie I'm going to show you, you haven't seen. So yeah. You, I want your ranking of that. Yeah, but we can movie, do that. But this movie I've seen. And I and love both this of us movie. Just like, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a 99, obviously, because they made a big 69 tower. <laughs> And that took that's, me out. <laughs> that's your point, Doc. I was, I was gonna say my point, Doc, off this movie is because of the names. Yeah, the, do, yeah, I was gonna say that too, but I don't want to dock it two points. I Can't gotta be pick one. Two points. So Can't. ninety. It's well, maybe you're docking it two half points, and it comes okay, down to okay, ninety nine. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Okay. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Okay, wow. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Chill, chill. It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay, chill. Okay. We already know. It's fine. All right, just stay. Just bring it on. Turn it oh, on. He's yes. spinning a banana on the tape. It's still spinning. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss that later. It's, Whoa, okay. That is... Uh, I'm not going to be able to, to move my eyes to anything else right now. You know, another fact I read about this movie, Tell totally me. back to like on topic here. Yeah, we'll come back to the banana. Back, Hold stay on. there, guys. Just keep it. It's still spinning. Good. Another one I just read was that his wedding ring, besides flashbacks, his wedding ring is in every scene in a dream. But not in reality, except for the last scene, when it cuts to his left hand, it cuts away. Huh. So just another open-ended thing to make you think. That is such... What a particular thing to do. What a particular thing to notice. Who noticed True, that? True, yeah. Who noticed that in every dream, he's he's wearing a wedding ring. But in the last one, where we're trying to determine if he's in a dream or not, cut away. Don't show the ring. That's like one of the little things that Christopher Nolan's pretentiousness just like came through and he was like, I got to put in a little Easter egg. Woo! Well, that in particular, I don't feel like that's, I don't know if that's pretentious. The name thing being <laughs> dreams pay dreams. Is, that's pay. pretentious. That's dumb. But the idea of like having a little, having symbolism like that, potentially, I don't know if that's, I don't know if I would say that's pretentious. Oh yeah. That's bro, something no, to, there's some pretentiousness in these names. I'm reading something about where Ariadne gets her name. It's Greek mythology. We're not, I'm not even going to read it. I dumb. saw that. Dumb. It's a Greek mythology name. No, I don't want to. No read one, it. Don't no care. one has that name. No one currently has that <laughs> name. Um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting little thing. Interesting. Interesting. Things that make you go. Hmm. Well, I think we plug it in. Uh, I've given my thoughts. I the think it's a 99. Uh, yeah, banana is still spinning. It's, still it's just spinning. kind of a trip. Yeah. Uh, I really don't want to acknowledge it. It's kind of making me... All of the minions are staring at it yeah, right now. They're stare- well, really, they're staring at it for you. For me, they're staring at me. Wait, what? All right, this is getting crazy. Okay, all right. Let's go deeper. No. <laughs> Let's go to another level. No, I'm I don't scared. like this level. <laughs> Next level, we'll come back. <laughs> uh, yeah, certified 99 banana 
If Christopher Nolan just didn't have stupid names after Greek <laughs> mythology, he'd earn the 100. And you know what? I like giving it a 99 because I know that if he heard this one day, he'd be like, are you serious? Not 100? <laughs> and I want to go, yeah, I'm pretentious too, buddy. <laughs> and you guys can duke it out. I could duke it out, bro. I could be snobby just like him. I, I still think, like... The names are irking <laughs> to me. I can't believe we've talked so much about the stupid names. But the, the names are irking to me. It doesn't take away that much from the movie, though, that I'm like, this. I, I truly think this movie is one of the best of our oh, time, it's amazing. of our generation. I think it's so good, and I think everyone should watch it. So for me, it's 100, and that's why I picked the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a good week. point. Like... It's it's a banger, and yeah. I can watch it over and over and over again, and notice something different every time. Banger movie, we'll watch again. My annual uh, Inception. An- oh hell yeah! Watching like every like five years, probably. I'll probably watch it sooner than that though. Honestly, annual every five, perfect. I can't watch it that much because I'm like, bro, my mind too focused. My like, mind I, can't handle. It's just this. too much. Yeah, it's too much going on. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta space it out. Yeah, I'll be mean, like, um, I watched it in three parts. <laughs> <laughs> But bro, thanks for thanks for letting me pick this movie this week. You know, trying to do something a little bit different. And oh, Pfft, my dice! I put them on the table, and it was two sixes, but upside down. So it was nine nine. Ninety nine is what I gave the movie. Oh my, my god! My dice just randomly said ninety nine. Bro, we might be in a dream state. What what? What the people don't know is that we're actually just rolling randomly every week for our ratings on on the that's on the a, movies. So. That's a great idea. I'm gonna start doing that. <laughs> no way! <laughs> that no, is a no, great no. idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, this movie was awesome. It got a seven. <laughs> How is it so bad? Uh, now he's. Rolling. I'm giving Inception a forty-two. No. <laughs> I was a. It was a great movie. One of the best I've ever seen. I think Christopher Nolan is a visionary. He's really changed cinema as we know it. 42. But the 69 scene drops it 58 <laughs> points bro, for me. Bro. That's why I didn't win the Oscar because Leo had <laughs> got 69. Yep, yep. We saw that scene and said no one in the film is winning an Oscar. There we go. Nah, this is a great movie. It's probably, it's honestly, it's 100, but with the names, 99. The names are the thing to nitpick at. And well, and you know what? For a man like him, he intentionally did that yeah. on purpose, and yeah. I hate that. I hate that, that he really was that snob. He let his snob come out for this one in some areas. Dumb. Dumb. Dumb role. Dumb. Amazing man, visionary, changes the game. Everybody should watch Christopher Nolan movies. I'm excited for Oppenheimer. It will not be as good as Transformers Rise of Beasts, <laughs> but Oppenheimer will be stellar. Interstellar almost Interstellar I would say yes. Another movie I haven't seen I haven't seen that one You before. haven't seen Interstellar? Dude I worked at the movie theater When that movie came out And it was I, I've heard the movie I've never watched it you I've watched heard it. the entire movie you Because it's so it. loud <laughs> <laughs> That That's true That's true I remember it being loud It would shake the walls In the theater You could hear from every theater that's When it was perf- an IMAX That's a perfect movie And then people would be upset Because they were like Can you turn it down? I'm like I can't I can't That's just the movie It's the movie it's the way they designed it for IMAX. Look, it wants every, to brew in your ears. Everyone knows that the best movies are the ones that cause uh, <laughs> local earthquakes. Those are the best movies. I'll tell you what I think about Interstellar, though. No. Oh. A zero is 100? Or are they zero? You got two. You, there's a zero on both of them? No, no, no. The double zero on the 100 die, is that a is that a 100 or is that Well, zero? it depends on the other one. What do you get on the other? Eight. So it's an eight total. Terrible movie. Terrible movie. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Interstellar, terrible. Thank you. That's how, <laughs> that's how the read percentile dice, and that's how bad Interstellar is, apparently. Uh, all right. Well, with that, thank you so much for listening to Straight Day Night. Uh, we do hope you enjoy, and thank you for thank you for listening and keeping up with what we're doing. Uh, what what is happening? What's going on? I rolled. Two more dice. The same dice that I put down Quit at rolling. 99, I ri- just rolled them. You watched me roll it, both fives. <laughs> well, I don't we know why. We be in dream state. I don't know why you don't roll like this when we play d and uh, uh, Thank you so much for listening. We do hope you enjoy. Uh, as always, uh, you can support us by following us on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts and leaving a review and following us on social media at Straight Dude Date Night and subscribing on YouTube. Uh, blah, the momentum randomly this week on uh, YouTube. Really fun to see. So thank you. Uh, and is there more I say? 
No, I don't think so. It. You just you thank me for being an amazing you. person. And How about do you have being your rock? Yeah, yeah, um, I do say that every week. Don't yeah. I? Uh, I say you're my rock. You're thank my... you for recommending a, a movie for me to watch again that I haven't seen in forever. Pretty much, might as well just never seen it. Yeah, because I, I was like rewatching it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Which is how long it's been? Uh, so I'm excited to show you my movie. It's going to be the complete opposite direction. Perfect. Yeah, I don't. I'm worried that you may not like it and may be too intense, but we're going to go with it anyway. I would be surprised if if that's the case. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Just shows me Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. I know we rated it 50 at the time. Certified banger. Babylon. <laughs> Babylon. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. Thank you guys so much for listening. We do hope you enjoy. Have a great day and have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye.